So let's do a little bit of preface on chapter two, um, what the tools are before we start getting too click happy. Um, but this chapter is going to cover placing basically all of the drainage elements. And as we discussed, they're in the layout tab. Um, the place node is going to be the way to place any inlet or manhole. Um, or even a, a dummy node if you've got elements of the system that aren't proper structures. The place conduit is going to be mainly our drainage pipe. Um, but what it's telling us here in the, in the course guide is that when we place it, all of the hydraulic property data, all of the symbology is populated at once. Um, so when we place a 2D cell, the 3D cell is placed as well, um, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of background, but once we get it in there, um, placing it is pretty simple. Um, and as we talked about before, gutter is required any time that you need bypass calculations for spread. Uh, and there is a, a note about that, and we'll encounter it in our exercise. Um, since gutter is not a, it's, it's just pure high, hydraulic calculation element, they put it on analytic view. So at no point will it get plotted or put into a deliverable by accident. Um, it's there just for calculation purposes. And I'm going kind of quickly on these, but um, if you do have questions, uh, let me know. Or we can, we'll slow it down once we get into placing them as well. Uh, so the catchment is the new semantics for drainage area. Um, you can do multiple catchments for a single structure. Uh, kind of we already discussed. Uh, it's not as automated as we would hope. Um, that's kind of what this note at the bottom here is, is talking about. So I'm sure folks will kind of figure out the best version of how to make things efficient as far as placing drainage areas. Um, but there is, I think, another kind of thinking outside the box. This may have come up in a prior tech call. Um, since this is a ESRI-friendly software, um, if you wanted to do your drainage uh, basin delineation and separate it like you may have used to do in geopack drainage, um, create your own little shapes for, for each of those, that's, that's another possibility. All right, uh, profile runs is, the, the, is what it says it does profiles. Um, I don't think you have to have a profile run for it to be considered a network. So in, in, in geopack drainage, where you used to have to create a formal network that combined a, a series of nodes and conduits, in this case, it, it recognizes when there's enough elements to have a network. But the profiles uh, are used both in a, there's a lot of analysis in visual, visualization tools um, to see the results of the calculations as well as plans development. All right, so that was our quick briefing. Um, before we go back to MicroStation, uh, I'd like everybody to find the materials, the drainage course files, zip folder. Uh, and we're just gonna copy paste all of those files, I'm gonna do a control C, and place it in our work set. So that should be on your C drive work sets. Um, but if you have trouble finding that location, um, we can also access it from MicroStation. So just raise your hand if you have any trouble finding it. But we're gonna go to our work set in the drainage folder. There's our one file we're in and that we created. And we're just gonna paste uh, all these files that we're gonna use as references. All right, so I'm going to give everybody a second to finish that.
All right. So now we can jump into attaching references. So if you go to, everyone should be in the drainage and utilities workflow. Over to the left to the home tab, gets us back to the primary group and the attached tools. So from references, open up that dialog. Then on the upper left, attach. And for, for me, it automatically found the folder I'm in. But if you need to, you can remap it at the top, but it should be all those new files. And you can hold down control and select all of the files at once, uh, change attachment method to coincident world, and hit open. Um, and this warning is a common one. Um, it's telling us these files do not belong to the active work set. Do you want to continue? Um, and so it's just helping us acknowledge this may be associated with another project, just so you know. Uh, but in this case, that's fine. All right, so now we see our populated, populated list of references. I don't see any hands raised, so I'm going to assume we're all good. In the view, we still, still see a blank screen. That just means it's not found where all the attachments are. So this fit view is a good tool to get yourself resituated with the rest of the references. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. Um, and we're, we'll go over a little bit of the references and what's in each of them. Um, you don't have to follow along clicking on and off. This is just for our benefit to understand what's there. So in the alignment file, that's the only reference that's turned on. We've got these series of lines. And the way Open Roads works is if you hover over a line or if you click a line and then hover, it'll give you both just some basic information as well as a menu to uh, do some actions with. So in this case, we're looking at the center line of State Route 61 alignment in our alignment file. And that's going to be the basis for our exercises. There are some other alignments in here. We've got the baseline survey for US 98. And I think this is an existing State Route 61 alignment. So all of these um, we'll be needing to click when we say we want to use this as our, our basis of placement. All right, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, this PDP file is the pond. Uh, so it's a 3D file. It's got a control line. It's got a template that's governing its uh, geometry. And it should also have a surface, which I'm going to, in the bottom left, there's some view controls. And right now we're looking at default. For the moment, I'm going to flip over and just show what the 3D view looks like. Again, hitting that fit view. So here you can see there's 3D triangles. Um, so there's a surface associated with the pond that we can use as a basis for elevations of proposed structures. OK. Then we have our existing terrain surface. Um, and in fact, if everybody wants to take this step, this will be one in our exercise here, is to select the outline. And in the quick menu here, the middle button says set as active terrain model. Um, just click that. And it now recognizes that as an active terrain. I think it helps it populate profiles and other surface information. Okay. 
All right, real quickly, the roadway design file, that's really just to show the 2D representation of the curb, lanes, sidewalk, etc. Uh, and then the 3D model of the roadway is this MOD LRD file. Uh, and again, that'll have a surface associated with it um, that we can use to have as a basis for our structure elevations. All right, so I think that's it. I'm going to turn all of these back on. And just for clarity, I'm going to pop off that 3D um, reference of itself. So when you create a drainage model, it automatically creates a 3D model for the drainage uh, file and references itself in the 2D space. All right, so now I think we're set to continue on. So we've attached our references, and we have already uh, set the active terrain. So this next exercise is a way to change the display of what do you want to see um, as we're going forward and placing elements. So instead of having to flick back and forth between 2D and 3D, you can just have all of them open. So if you go, I'm not going to use the toggle because I don't know it by hand, but if you have your mouse in the 2D space and hold down your right mouse button, then this menu populates and view control gives you an entire list of different configurations of views. So in this case, let's do the three views, plan, profile, and 3D. So it automatically pushed our 2D space to the upper left, 3Ds in the upper right, and now we have this prompt asking for a dynamic profile view. So if we click OK, it's going to ask us, OK, well, what's your profile? So locate the plan element. So I'm going to zoom out to where I can easily pick on that alignment for State Route 61. So once I've clicked it, now it's saying, okay, well, where do you want me to put it? Oh, I guess I clicked a little bit too much. Go through that scene. There we go. So I'm going to click the alignment, and I'm opening it by left clicking into that bottom window. So now you can see the entirety of the profile of the roadway alignment. Um, and in the plan view, the arrows and the shading kind of indicates, helps you see what you're seeing in the profile. So this is one way to recognize drainage patterns is just to open up the roadway profile and see where the high points and the low points. So that's one of the items. Um, figured we spend just a little bit of time on, let's say you're having to design this road. What do you, how do you tell where the elevations are? Where do the inlets need to go? Um, so there's a few more tools at the disposal of designers. Um, so I'm just going to touch on those real quickly here. So there's profile reports. And if we click on a profile element, so same idea, you click and hover, you get a menu. The profile report generates and it automatically selects a, an appropriate report, but this left uh, list has all sorts of other available information should you want it. So now we get the, uh, the PIs, the vertical profile points that if we wanted to identify where are the low points along this profile, um, that would be one way of doing that. 
All right, another way is to see change the display of the terrain. Um, so we can add contours or flow lines, arrows, um, that sort of thing to, to help just more or less visually locate where you want your structures. So I'm going to expand the 3D view and I'm going to click on the edge of the terrain. You'll see there's individual triangles that you can click on, but there's usually an edge. And in this case, it's called, well, most of it'll be called a DTM top mesh. Um, so that'll be what hopefully all the roadway folks hand over for drainage to use. It's just one big surface. Um, they may have multiple roadway models, but they can be combined so that there's just a single surface. Makes the, the drainage folks lives a little easier. So we've got properties that we can open up. Um, but I think the place, I'm going to just revert back to our example here. So we're going to set some overrides so that we can turn on some of those properties by default that are turned off. So you can see the grayed out means I can't necessarily edit it, but it has the capability to turn on major contours, minor contours, etc. If you go down to the bottom of that menu, you can override the symbologies in this file. And it'll, it will ungrade them out in that properties dialog. There we go. Thank you. All right. So let's say I want to see what's the direction of flow. And it'll put an arrow in every single triangle. Um, if you wanted to see high points and low points, um, could be dangerous depending on how the terrain is put together. But it'll also... In this case, it's telling us there's a point right there. It's labeling, here's your high point at elevation 3266. Um, let's see what else was there. I think it's just the flowers that are mainly helpful. So that's another way to recognize drainage patterns. There we go. Uh, and the last is analyze trace slope is another option. Uh, so we're going to go back to the home tab here. And we're going to go to civil analysis in the model analysis group and scroll down to analyze trace slope. So the window that pops up is to select your method. Um, I think maximum is okay. Let's double check there. Yep. Um, minimum depth. Right now the default is one, but let's just make it 0.5. Trace slope direction, it's going to go from high to low, so down is correct. Uh, and there's already a trace slope feature definition set. So when you select the terrain model element, you're going to try and find the edge of the top mesh. And now your cursor shows a circle um, anywhere in the terrain. So it's similar to the previous tree slope. It'll just select a, a down slope from that point. So I'm just going to left click to accept. And now it's created this 3D element and I'm going to turn off the references here so you can see. It just created this yellow line that from the point I selected is finding where eventually that rain raindrop is going to flow to. So this green line is the kind of sag in the model where the low point in that structure probably needs to be. 
which is also consistent with our, our low point, uh, kind of hidden there, but that's a low point label. All right. So it's going to take some getting used to as far as what designers use as the most efficient way to locate their structures, but we're giving them a few, few options here. All right, so now we're going to talk AccuDraw. So I'm going to go back to uh, my view control and reset my, this time I'm just going to do uh, plan in 3D. All right, so now they're nice and tucked in. The AccuDraw, if you don't have it already activated, um, it looks like this menu here, but you can also use the search ribbon to find it under Civil AccuDraw. And anytime you can't find a tool, the best approach is just to type it in the search in the upper right, and it'll tell you all the places if it's in multiple places where where it's saved. And you can click it, and it'll, it'll open up and activate it. Um, so this menu is, I, I'd say this is a pretty powerful tool as far as uh, a benefit that Open Roads gives drainage designers. So if we say we want to define a structure and we want it to be relative to an alignment, and let's say I want it at a specific station and offset. And if for some reason the alignment shifts five or 10 feet, do I want that structure to shift with it? Or if it rotates, do I want that structure to rotate with it? Um, so these are just tools that you can place up front that give you that flexibility to uh, tweak it pretty quickly. But if you don't place structures with this and you just kind of eyeball it in or I just want it nearest and snap to the curb, um, that's fine. It's just going to be static. It won't, it won't update automatically if the roadway elements are. So it's up to designers what they, what they think is most useful for them in their process. But we're going to walk through placing it with a station offset. Uh, there are other tools to use in here. You can see across the list if you want it relative in some other fashion. Uh, but station offset's a pretty familiar one for, for most DOT projects. So the way to tell if it's activated is the, or toggled on, will be shaded back, or you can click it and it'll toggle off. So in this case, I uh, need everybody to set it so that it's toggled on and the station offset, which is second from the right, is active. All right, so once that's set up, we're going to go back to our drainage and utilities workflow over to layout and place our first node. So we get a pretty lengthy window here uh, as far as the properties that we're going to fill in. Um, so I'm just going to explain a little bit from top to bottom. We're not necessarily going to populate all these right now. Uh, but we could if we wanted. Um, so it's a little preview, actually. We can't because we haven't activated the item types. But the first section here is drainage inlet. And this is part of the quantities workflow. Um, through a series of a couple pull downs, the pay item number will automatically be generated. Um, so if we chose to do that up front, we could do that while we place it. Or we could wait until we're done and we know, let's say, I don't know if it's going to be less than 10 feet or more than 10 feet. Um, we can always update it and uh, assign it later. Um, oh, Angela, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a quick question. No problem. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get the place node dialog box to pull um, for the elevation and pay, pay item number, all of that information? Did you actually click on the alignment first before you did uh, that? No, no. Um, here, I'll, I'll just kind of reset. I'm making sure that the... Civil AccuDraw is toggle on, and then just only selecting place node, it brings up the full full dialog here. Are you getting something that's different? 
It's it's yeah. probably because yours is already set to a feature inlet down at the bottom. Oh, that's what it is. Yep. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll get there. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, so I actually don't want to hard code an elevation. This is probably taking out from um, some of my other test models or something. So what I do want is to have a vertical offset and it's going to be 0 0.001. And for whatever reason, um, and also just once you click it, it only reports to 100, so it's not going to show up. Um, but what this does is ensure when the structure is placed, it lines up with the surface. Um, seems like there's a bug or something we haven't quite figured out with the with the tools, and this is a, just a workaround. All right, so the prompt, we started filling out some of the table, but just to take a quick note, the prompt that it's asking us for with our mouse is select reference element for the node elevation. So either we can do that or we can hard code an elevation. In this case, we're gonna select that reference element. That's where it becomes useful to have the 3D file open to the right, because you can pretty easily find that edge of the DTM top mesh. So I'm gonna left click to select that. And you can tell that it's accepted because the prompts have changed to something else. But we're gonna keep going through our menu there. Um, there is a option to do catchment delineation uh, with just a checkbox and it'll, based off the terrain, try to automatically define the drainage area. Um, I'd say this may be something designers wanna do. Uh, it will probably crash our computers if we try it now. <laughs> uh, it just takes a lot more information processing into into that action. So we're going to avoid that for now, but it is another way if you want to do it. Uh, and Bentley has some good documentation on how folks could look into that. All right, so continuing down rot rotation mode, uh, we have relative to alignment or absolute. Um, I'm just going to keep it on that relative to alignment. Um, and let's see, rotation, we're going to keep the zero for now. Feature definition, you guys probably haven't got this filled in yet. Um, going from the top, we're going to go into node, stormwater node, drainage structures, um, and might as well just pick this type one left orientation curve inlet. Nah, let's go to type two. There we go and it's asking for a name prefix. So I'm gonna say S101. All right, so now our cursor, the prompts have a station offset, defined catchment and a vertical offset. If you hit the tab button, it'll cycle between the various entries. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so to activate To activate the station offset, we're going to tab over to offset and type in zero. Oops. For origin. So now the new prompt is select a reference for basically the station offset. So now I'm going to click on the alignment. So now I see when I move the cursor up and down, all of the station offset becomes dynamic off of State Route 61. All right, I'm gonna... Just, a, just one correction. You said zero, but you meant O for origin. I did mean O for origin, thank you. All right, so the station we can hard code in. I'm gonna type in 706 plus 50. 
and the offset. Sorry, just one moment, let me pull back up the example in the location there's 7 or 6 plus 50 and the offset is going to be 40. All right, so now you can see we're kind of locked in to the location. If we move the cursor, it's not going to move with us. So we're going to left click to kind of advance through the remaining prompts. So the next prompt is asking for a rotation mode. We still want it to be relative to alignment. <clears throat> so left click. And now it's asking, OK, well, what's your alignment? So we're going to click again on that center line of 61. So now it's locked into some rotation versus that alignment. So you may have to come up with a few iterations to get it to um, hard code to the right rotation. But 270 just worked for me. So I'm going to left click and accept. And it's going to take just a moment for the system when it places the first structure it takes a little bit of while um, question how you lock again how to lock it yeah so if you've got it to where you've hit the O on station or offset to uh, define the reference alignment. Um, then you can just type into those boxes and use the tab to activate which which box is active, and you can hard code over it. I think if you enter hit the enter key after you've keyed in the station, it will lock it to that station. I don't know if it does it if you tab or not. Mm -hmm. You might have to enter and then tab or it's not working for me. Enter tab. Um, all right. So I'll pause on my screen. Do you want to share yours? We can troubleshoot. Sure. I'm raising my hand. I have to. Is the only one. No, it's the other one. Okay. So I'm right here, station. 706 plus 50, offset 40. I'm doing tab, but it's not looking. Okay, so hit the O key. Make V1 active first. Hit the okay. O key. Once you're in the, uh, hit O, and then uh -huh. select your center line. Select that, that one there. Okay. Now, now tab to the station. Key in 706. Okay. No. Okay. Got it. And now click offset. Yeah. If okay. you zoom out, it should be sitting over there at that offset. Over there. Got it. So and you see then... prompts for the rotation. Um, so you can say left click to accept the rotation mode. And then it's asking for. Oops, I lost that. I... Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, just need to hit. Them. It'll keep a lot of the settings you already had. So Giancarlo, you just. Well, I think you just set the alignment for the elevation because the first thing you got to do is tell it which terrain you're going to set it on. So reset all the way out again. 
Okay. And start it again. Mm -hmm. So the very first um, thing it's asking you is which yeah. terrain element. So this is where you pick the top mesh in the 3D view. Okay. Okay. Now if you come back, this is where you hit, you go to the offset field. So tab to the offset field. Mm -hmm. And then hit the O for origin. Now mm -hmm. select the alignment. Mm -hmm. And then tab up to the station and key in 706. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once you have that, then you can go relative to alignment. So mm -hmm. left click. Now pick either the edge of pavement or the center line to place it along that alignment. Okay, and now it should be trying to figure out what rotation angle you want to go. So you want to go 90, I think, or try 90. You can always change it. Yeah, a little finicky, but... Okay, so left again, because it's night already. Yeah. yeah, just go ahead and do that and see where, see where you end up. Okay, so now if you reset, you can change that angle. So reset, reset. all the way out of here. Okay. All the way out of the place tool. Then click but on I, it. I can now always move it like that, right? Yep. You, or just click on the number where the angle is. Mm, okay. Wow. That's the station. The angle is that north 29. On, not... You might have to right-click over it. Yeah, there's, there's two little arrows where you can move it manually. Or it's you not can letting me do anything. Um, F is F6. If you right click on the number, does it change it to white? Kind of looks like it's frozen up a bit. Yeah, it's catching up on all its clicks. Um, okay, so you can always. Looks like you got a lot of them in your file already, according to your project manager or pro your explorer tool. Oh no, it's just the feature oh, definition the... still there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, you can always delete it and start over. I don't know why it's not letting you change it. You should be able to change the angle. But... Yeah, but it doesn't even. Okay, there you go. Come on. It's kind of slow. Hold on. It's kind of it's acting weird. You may want to jump out of open roads and back in. I tell you what. At lunchtime, when when Angela has all these placed in there, we'll go ahead and share that file out with everybody, and then you won't have to worry about getting them all placed in there. Correct, exactly. So we'll just let Angela get the rest okay. of them in there. Hopefully, she sure. won't have trouble, and we'll share that file. Thank you. Sure. All right, just realized I was muted. <laughs> All right, um, there's a few more properties to update from this structure, 
and you'll see in the orange, since we placed it with station offset, now we can edit according to station offset. So by clicking on the orange, if I wanted to move it 10 feet, I can just enter in, overwrite it, and click enter. Uh, same thing with the offset, and that was the idea. Uh, let's just say if I put in 90, does this thing want to rotate? Um, it does. So it goes with the bearing. I think that's a little bit less um, user-friendly, but it all works in angles. You can eventually get to where you're going. All right, so I've got this selected. Now I'm going to hover over it and try and activate the quick menu. Oh, I'm going to try. Not sure why that's not wanting to open, but... So select the little circle where the manhole is. I think that's usually where you can get the properties. There's a little dash circle around all those. Uh, okay. It's not participating oh. either. Yeah. Well, if all else fails, there's the proper properties menu that can come up. Uh, the quick menu is just a convenience factor. Uh, so looking in, we're seeing all of the properties that are set. Um, but under this utility section where we have our station offset reference, uh, it doesn't automatically uh, populate this based off of how we placed it with AccuDraw. It's really separate. So even if we didn't use a station offset to locate the structure and we just plopped one in, um, this setting is what will tell the software, you know, this is how we want to report on it. It's with the center line of State Route 61. So by clicking the ellipse, I bring up the prompt for a uh, reference, select reference element for node. So I'm going to then click on that State Road 61 center line again. So now that's populated and it can be reported in the uh, various flex tables. All right, so I think that takes us through the first step, the first exercise. Um, and again, if you wanted to rename structures, actually, let's just circle back. Now in our Project Explorer on the left, uh, we can expand out. And now we have a node that we can manage from that menu. So by right-clicking, you could also pull up the properties, uh, utility properties, uh, which are different than the element properties. Um, I'm not sure if we don't think we've gone over this just yet. So the properties dialog brings up more of the um, 2D plan view type stuff and the utility properties has all of the hydraulic data. So I don't think there's anything that we need to set in particular under the hydraulic properties. A lot of that is just pre-populated from the prototype. But if you had a reason to change something, uh, this would be the place that you would do it uh, on a structure by structure basis. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do a outfall node and we're not going to use the, the station offset. So you can kind of see and feel the differences uh, between the two. So we're going to go back to, I'm going to toggle off the civil Aki draw and then go back to place node. And under my pull down, I don't want a curb inlet, I want a outlet. And let's just say it's a mitered in section, 18 inch, um, and the nomenclature in here, just FYI, is based off of all the cells that have been developed in the past. And it's pretty straightforward once you get the, the hang of it there. 
Let me go back so you can find the 18 inch RCP. Um, the numbers, the two and the four are the slopes. And then the suffix at the end is single or double. So I'm just going to do a two to one single. I'm going to call this S102. And I'm not going to fill in any of the drainage MES uh, item type information. That'll be for quantities later. Um, I don't want an elevation. I do want to do, so I'm going to uncheck that box. My prompt still should be asking me for a reference element for elevation. So I'm going to scroll over. And in this case, it's going to be the pond that I'm going to put in the structure, not the road. So find the DTM pot mesh or the pond. So that's my elevation. And I'm going to keep going with the prompts. So you can see it's a lot more simple of a prompt. There's no station offset. Um, it's really just kind of place it by eye if you go without civil AccuDraw. So I'm just going to well, pop something in there. We can always move it around. Um, and for rotation, I do want it to be relative to the pond. I want it to line up flush. So I'm going to left click to accept that mode and then select the pond element to say that's what I want it to be aligned with. And then I'm going to hard code in, try 90. Oh, 90 didn't work. I'm going to try, let's try 180. There we go. Um, so now it's perpendicular to the pond bottom as it comes in. And then I'm going to left click to accept. All right, so let's say eh, it didn't really line that up where I want. You can use any of the little modifiers or handles on these to relocate it once you've placed it. But the modifiers, again, are more simple. There's no station offset to hard code. It's only available what you chose originally to place it. Uh, but again, we're going to here's your menu. Um, set our reference alignment, the station offset reference, to the center line of construction so that when we look at its properties, it still knows where it is relative to, um, relative to the station offset. So see 706 plus 55 offset, 102.8 to the right. I think that gets us through exercise 1.3. All right, so now we're going to place a conduit and connect our S101 to S102. So back up into the layout tab and the layout group, place conduit. Again, we've got to tell them uh, what's the feature definition that we want to choose? So the path to this is conduit to stormwater, drainage pipes, circular pipe, and circular concrete. So since it's a pipe from S101, I'm going to call it P101. And at this point, I can choose a preliminary pipe size, um, or it can be changed later if we have the software to sign it for us. But since I have an 18-inch MES, I'm going to use an 18-inch pipe. So the prompts that we get are select start node and the anywhere along the connection region, which is this orange dash line, is where it will let you connect a pipe. So I'm going to left click there. And again, same thing. There's very tiny but linear element for the connection region of where this pipe is going to connect in. So left click to accept. All right, so now we see we have this pipe. The little flow arrows are giving us the direction from upper to lower. 
and we don't have to assign any extra um, reference alignment properties to this, uh, but if we wanted to, let's say, change the pipe size or open up the utility properties to maybe change the pipe material or prototype, um, you can do that after the fact. It just won't be automatic if you're to make changes in the prototype. Um, and also what it's doing for elevations, you'll notice we didn't hard code anything in. It is going from the default bottom of the structure. Um, oh, it looks like I didn't get a good elevation on my S101 there. Um, so we'll have to fix that. But it takes the bottom elevation from the upper structure to the bottom elevation of the lower structure. All right, so I'm just going to double check and see what happened to this guy's elevation. Should be at 30.5. Let's look in the 3D view, see if it's showing up. Mm -hmm. Curious. Uh, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, structure um, in the right um, it's, it's place in the right position? Because I see that the gap of the water entrance is looking to the other side. I uh, see the manhole is looking. Hold on. Am I? Oh, okay. Never mind. It's because I placed the structure in a different. Okay, you're good. Never mind. I see now you zoom out. Never mind. No I'm good. You're I good. Think, I mean, I think when you were placing it before, I placed uh, it in the other side. Yeah, yeah. It was sorry. So just a trick on no, but it's a. I'm glad you brought it up because uh, when you're hard coding in that station offset, depending on where the cursor is, whether it's left or right, sometimes we'll kind of force it to the left, even though you didn't type in negative 40, um, mm. something that it seems to do. Okay. So the negative is important in that case. Yeah, it has to do with when you key in that offset, whether your cursor is to the left side or to the right side of the alignment. It tries to, it's like artificial intelligence. If your cursor is to the left, it thinks you really mean left, not right. Got it. You okay. Put a positive value in there. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Well, I am a little bit baffled, and I'll come back to that on why is this structure uh, sitting 30 feet below ground there. Um, but let's say I wanted to hard code in the actual surface. It is finding the ground elevation at 30. Actually, we're going to do another little troubleshooting mechanism here. I'm going to pull up a cross section. Um, so I'm going to go to view control and let's do the 3D views with plan 3D and cross-section. So it just needs to see the alignment, a left and a right offset, and then a station with 76 plus 50. Okay, so the top is right. Uh, for whatever reason, our structure is very, very deep. All right, so we'll fix, we'll fix that. Uh, but you can see in cross-section, it is coming in at the right spot at the, at the edge of pavement there. So part of that might be 
I might have had a checkbox or something on for the invert elevation. So I'm going to hard code that back up to, let's say, 28. And we'll see if the structure invert decides to follow. So in the utility properties under the subsurface utilities tab, it does recognize there's ground surface at 30.85. Um, and let's see where I think it you is. just need to click in your cross-section view and it will update the graphics. Oh, there we go. Thanks. All right, so you can see that it makes a, um, it'll let you put in a pipe as shallow as, or more shallow than it really should be. Um, so I'm going to lower this down a bit. I'm going to take this down to, let's see, I'll stick to the example. All right, so we've got 25, 95, and 25. There's some good elevations there. And you may have to place the outlet at a hard-coded elevation. Um, oh, no, it, it'll follow the, the pipe there um, because it's placed at the crown of the pipe, which in theory should line up with the terrain, but not necessarily always. All right, so now we've placed an inlet and an outlet in the conduit, so it's all connected. Hey, um, Angela, quick question on the uh, station offset or the lo reference location information. If you change it in the utility properties, can you, does it change it in the graphics on your outfall? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Um, I think it has to be um, part of the civil AccuDraw Acu elements, but let's give it a shot. Let's see if we want to change it to 120. Um, no, I don't think it moved it. Okay. Okay. I was just curious if that would move it that way. But if yeah. you do move it graphically, it does update it in the properties. Correct? Right. Yep. In fact, I'll make it line up with this a little bit better there. Yeah, you could turn your civil AccuDraw back on and move it to an exact location. And... Oh, you think it would... Yeah, if you try to move it, it should still be there, I would think, yeah. Now, if you tab up, you can move it to a specific station. Okay. That's good to know. Hmm. I was just trying to get you to a better, uh, a prettier property uh, cross-section view. <laughs> All right. I'll eyeball that a little bit better here. There we go. Not quite perfect, but pretty close. All right, so now we're going to place a drainage area to contribute some flow to our inlets. And there's not a, a lot of easy tools just to automatically do that. So for purposes of this exercise, I'm going to draw in something that's approximate. Um, and the other complicating factor is uh, open roads still seems to make cords out of curves. Um, so our alignment is 
curved in this location. So even if we were to make a nice shape by offsetting some of the, the lines there, um, it would be broken up into some more, more lines rather than curves. Uh, but you can follow along. Um, it doesn't have to be an accurate shape if you want to just go to the drawing tool and go to the place shape um, toolbox there and you could have AccuDraw on or off. I'm just going to kind of freeform this. I'm going to go from the center of the median out to outside of the sidewalk and somewhat trace these lines and it's the level I'm drawing on is construction lines so it's not really showing up too well uh, and then I'm going to stop it at around station 708 the median and then come back and close the shape So from a functional standpoint, um, the way open roads will then take this shape and turn it into a, a catchment. It ends up deleting the shape and I don't think it's necessarily retroactive. So what I would recommend to users is to create them separately in another file and copy them in uh, once they have their design ready. So over the well, when you do the defined catchment areas, if it's referenced, it won't delete the reference. It'll just, it lets you select the reference lines, correct? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I know I've made a, a reference file and brought it in. I've copied, I've usually copied them in as a live line. Okay. Um, but if there's a shape in one of these reference files, we could test it. Uh, I know we had a file that had all the, the the basin boundary delineated. I don't know if it's part of your data set or not, but um, it's we can we can test it another time. This is fine, yeah. just the way you're doing it. <laughs> all right, so over to place catchment again. We've got to fill out all the feature definition elements. Um, so for for this, we're going to say it's all pavement as a start, but we can edit the C value later uh, if we decide that's not appropriate. Uh, and since it's going to structure 101, I'm going to call it DR 101. And from a methodology, we have three options if we didn't choose to automate it, automatically create it when we place the node, um, is to pick a shape, pick points, or do a flood fill. So pick shape is Pretty simple. simple. Uh, I'm going to left click to accept that method and then it prompts me to identify the shape. And I'm going to select what the next prompt is to what inlet does it drain. So it goes to S101 and then the next and last prompt is do we want this to be a 3D element? If so, you could pick the terrain. Um, it's a, a preference. I don't know if it's necessary to be in there. So I'm just going to um, alt to continue without picking the surface. And then it's done. So now it's changed the level symbology to the FDOT standard drainage divides um, 04, which is just what was selected for that feature definition. And now we should be able to start setting up some computations, I guess, in a chapter to come as far as getting the flow to go through this inlet and through the pipe. Um, let's go back. There are a few more properties we do want to check into for the catchment. Um, if you click and hover, you get the quick menu and go to utility properties and this is a way to um, change any of the settings if you wanted so if we didn't like that 
0.95 because we know, hey, there's a little bit of grass between the sidewalk or in the median. Let's make it 0.85. It'll run those calculations as it's defined in this specific location, um, not by the 0.95 from the feature definition. It's just a starting point. And it needs a value for the user-defined TC. Um, so I'm going to enter in 10 minutes as the minimum there. And then we're done with the properties. Um, the course guide uh, shows some examples, and it's kind of what we did with that prototype. If we wanted to have it calculate a weighted curve number or, or C value, um, we could do that. Or if we just know it's going to be a certain value, that can be hard coded in. All right, so we're going to make this network a little bit more complicated than just two structures. Um, we're going to place a second curb inlet and then add a gutter between the two. Um, so if you're comfortable flying through, um, you can go ahead and add another inlet, but I'm going to uh, walk through the steps again. So a little bit more reinforcement on the civil ACCU draw and place node. So civil ACCU draw is toggled. I'm going to place a node. Reference elevation is the DTM top mesh. Tabbing over to select O for origin. Select our center line alignment. That didn't quite catch. It helps if there's no competing line work there. All right, and let's just say I want to place this structure at station 705 and move my cursor over to the right, and then 40 as a offset. Oh, and I realize I'm placing an MES, so I need to go back to <laughs> the feature definition. Let's go to a curb. Let's call it a left inlet. Actually, it might be closer to a right coming from that direction. Let's call this S103. And hard code in at 0 0.001 into the vertical offset, which is that active prompt. And we're just going to left click through to ignore the catchment. Uh, rotation relative to alignment, so it's still lined up with the center line here. And the rotation, hard code in 270 to get that bearing a little more accurate. And left click to let it place. Uh, so I'm just going to repeat a few of the steps that we've already done to get this uh, network expanded. I'm going to draw a catchment and add it to there. And I'm also going to place a conduit from our new, new curb inlet back to the other system. So uh, first, let's do a conduit. This is going to be P103 from S103. And it's going to be 18 inch. Circular, con circular concrete is already selected. So it's just asking for a start and stop node. And you'll see it's got the station offset in the prompt just because I have so civil AccuDraw Acu toggled on. Uh, but it, it doesn't really have an effect on the placement here or even editing it afterwards. Let's say I want to clean up the flow lines a little bit. Um, actually, that's not a terrible 2650. Nice even number down to 2595. All right. So that's good for now. And lastly, need another catchment. So I'm going to go back to draw, make myself another shape. Let's just say we're 
down to about 703 of a drainage area. So finish drawing the shape. Going to go back to layout and place catchment. And we're going to pick the shape. The name prefix is going to be 103. Accept the methodology for pick shape and then select the shape. The outflow it goes to is S103. And I'm going to hit Alt to ignore the surface. All right, so I know that was a little quick. I'm going to give just a second for folks to catch up if you're still following along. Uh, but basically now we've got two inlets, each with drainage areas and conduit connecting them together. Uh, however, if we were to do calculations for this new uh, on-grade curb inlet, um, right now it wouldn't be able to tell us where and how it bypasses to the downstream structure. So that's where we're headed next is to place a gutter. All right, so up in the layout group, you can go to place gutter. It's going to tell us, it's going to change our view to analytic view, uh, which is going to change any text or you'll see the effects once we hit yes. Um, so if that ever gets too cumbersome, um, you can change the drawing scale to a full size and the analytic analytic view no longer becomes obnoxious. Uh, and you'll also see in blue there's this temporary text uh, that just gives additional helpful information about the design. It's not anything that is printed or plotted. It's just uh, only visible in this analytic view. All right, so back to our menu for place gutter. Um, we've got to give it a feature definition, and this is a 2% cross slope road, so that's how we're going to ask it to run the calculations for, and it's from 103 to S101, so we're going to call it better 103. So we're going to pick the start node. Um, and it still requires a connection in this orange circle of a connection region, even though the gutter is not, not technically there. Um, but it should still be representative of a longitudinal slope between the two. So left click to accept. It does kind of land on top of the pipe. So if you weren't concerned about it automatically knowing the longitudinal slope, you could, um, or if you wanted to hard code it, you could put in some bins so that it's uh, a little easier to click on. So that's our gutter. I'm going to open up some properties. Pretty simple. It's just, it's finding its own inverts. Um, if you wanted to be a little more accurate, you could put in the ground elevations or the, in, the top of the structures there, um, which I guess let's go ahead and be accurate for accuracy's sake. So our top of our structure here, elevation is uh, 3140 and our one downstream is 3085. So we're going to enter in those elevations into the gutter here. All right, and from the normal properties, you can click the ellipse to open up utility properties. Um, this is just for review. Everything's already preset from the prototype. Um, it's telling it to use a Manning's N of 0 0.016 with a 2% cross slope. And the slope has been calculated 
just by dividing the vertical difference over the length. All right, everybody caught up, have a gutter placed and all the conduits connected together. Uh, any questions at this point? Uh, that was super fast, but I, um, question. Um, are we recording this so we can review it after? Mic on. Yes, I think we are. Yes, we are still have okay. recording for all the sessions. Awesome, okay, thank you. Mic off. Um, do we want to pause to, um, yeah, I apologize for that being a little fast. Um, my guess is most people are watching at this point. They're going to wait for you to give them this file okay. after lunch. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. That is right. <laughs> All right. So that was the end of exercise 210. Um, what's going on next is we're going to create a profile run from these elements that we've got so far. except I'm going to turn off analytic view, which you can do with the view attributes once you're done with the gutters. Um, I think it's here. Well, we will find that out in a bit. Um, all right, yeah, we can keep going with the profile. So back into layout under Profile runs, we've got a few options of how we want to create it. Um, and really it's, do you want the software to just automatically find everything or do you want to um, identify it manually yourself? Um, so since we've got just one simple run, we're not going to need to split it up. I'm going to click the first option, hydraulic run from node. And the feature definition, um, there's not really a specific feature definition for the profile run itself, so we're putting it on a construction line, which I think is available under the roadway. Let's um, there. Under roadway design and construction lines. So all this is going to do is the line that's placed in plan view for you to be able to select this profile. Um, we're going to make sure it doesn't get included in anything that's printed. All right, so selecting the start node, going upstream, and you can see the orange line automatically populated to the outfall. And left click to accept. It'll take a moment to process. So, this new blue line that you can see because it kind of goes to the center of the structures, makes it easier to select that way, is now going to be listed in our profile runs in Project, Man Project Explorer on the left. And if we wanted to rename it, um, you can see this is S103 to S102. So by right-clicking on the profile run in Project Explorer, there are several options to view and take a look at it. Uh, the first one is Open Profile Model. So what this is going to do is open up another view and window in um, our window set here. So I'm just going to open up a, our view four here, and wherever you select, it'll populate that entire profile. 
Uh, so one thing to note, the stationing along the bottom is has nothing to do with the center line of roadway or the stationing. Um, it is purely stationing along the center of the pipe. So it starts at zero plus zero and goes through the length. Um, but you'll see the rectangles represent the structures and the pipe is there. Uh, and once we run computations, uh, stuff like the HGL can populate if we want. Um, the other ways to view the profile is the analysis profile. Uh, again, this will populate. It'll have some nice blue shading showing the HGL and below for where the water's at. Uh, there's options to label things automatically um, to show more annotation. Uh, this is just all out of the box uh, tools, visual, visualization tools from from Bentley. Um, so there's one more that's the engineering profile. This has more of a plans preparation-esque uh, setup, um, but it is static. Um, though you could export this to a plan sheet, it's only going to be a snapshot and won't update automatically where the as opposed to the profile model uh, that we see here. So I think that is the extent of creating a profile run and viewing the different options. Now we're to the fun part of creating a J-bottom structure. So like I mentioned before, um, the resources in open roads are not every possible combination of a inlet top and a variable bottom dimension for our structures. Um, they're typically a, a P bottom that comes with it. So this is a methodology to help users um, create feature definitions by using um, the cells and templates that already exist for the J-bottoms, they just haven't been put in combination into a feature definition. Um, and hopefully in some near future, there's going to be some updates for the software to allow for parametric cells and sizing such that this is a, this is a temporary workflow until there's um, more updates to the software available. In the meantime, if you need a J-bottom or a changing around to a rectangular or back and forth, um, this will be the approach that we'll use. All right, so the first part we're going to do is in our Open Road Standards under Project Explorer in the design model. Uh, we're going to expand down to feature definitions and find a version that we want to copy. So let's say this type 2 curb inlet really needs to be a J bottom. And that'll be our basis to, to start with. So what we've got now is a inlet curb to P bottom, basically. So you can right click and copy and it'll paste. It advances the number, but we need to rename it to make it more logical. Um, let's call it a 2J and give it some dimensions. Let's say it needs to be a five foot diameter. Uh, but this will be really up to, to users to decide what's the easiest. Um, once it comes to quantities and such, it's, it can't really uh, mess up the terminology there. So when we open up the properties of our new feature definition, we'll see that it still has all the old links to a standard type 2 P structure. So we've got to also make a few copies of our 
symbology so that it will find the right J bottom size. So I'm going to scroll down to our feature symbologies and the solid category under node and stormwater curb. And again, we have the same similar thing. The, the structures that are placed in this file now have feature definitions defined in this file. So I'm going to make a copy. Going to rename it 2J. And in here, I'm going to open up the properties again. So it's looking at a top template of a inlet curve 2 underscore 35. And it's looking at a bottom template of a P bottom 4 foot diameter. So here's where I'll use the pull down menu to select. I think we said a J bottom five foot diameter. And I think that is about it, except now we've got to go back to our feature definition and tell it to look at our new symbology. Okay, so it sees our new 2J. And then we're set. So although S1 here is still a P bottom, um, this is where I could change it to a J bottom. But the caution is if there's changes in the hydraulic properties, those were imprinted from the prototypes and they will not update. Um, but from a hydraulic perspective, um, there's not a lot that goes into the bottom size. There, there are input for it, so it can be updated if needed, but the major hydraulics are really captured in the inlet efficiencies and pipe sizes. Um, so in this case, if we wanted to change it to a J, we could do that here. But probably the best practice is to, to place a new structure with that feature definition so that there's no risk of uh, kind of old properties hanging around that we didn't really intend. So if I go to the 3D view now, I have some references so you can kind of see what's going on. Now it will show our larger six foot, five foot diameter uh, J bottom there. I could make it more drastic, um, so, but we can look and compare to the the other side. Uh, the other P bottom that's a four foot diameter is shown there. So it's not too complicated of a process. And I think once um, projects figure out what are their typical structure sizes, it'll be pretty quick to um, make those resources available in the design file. All right, so I think that completes chapter two.